Today let's talk about how to solve equations. Um, so what is an equation? Equation is two expressions set equal to each other. X plus three is an expression and five is an expression. And because that equal sign is there in the middle, it makes it an equation. Um, and you probably have seen some equations like this from middle school where you might can just look at it and you would know that X equals two. That's the value for the variable that makes the equation true. But when we get to algebra, we have to kind of think about what steps we're using. So to find x, we use inverse operations. Since 3 was added, we can subtract 3 from both sides. That keeps the equation balanced. And we can find the variable value, which is 2. Um, as we get into more difficult equations, we want to keep in mind how we're going to use these steps to solve. So let's look at this one. 7n minus 3 equals negative 38. So how do we know what order to do these operations? A common misconception is that you just do order of operations backwards, but that's not always true. You have to look at what order the operations were done to the variable in that specific problem. So in this one, if we look at n, which is our variable, and we look at what operations happened to it, it was multiplied by 7, and then we subtracted 3, and got a value of negative 38. In order to undo everything that happened to n, we will use inverse operations backwards. So instead of subtracting 3, we added 3. Instead of multiplying by 7, we divided by 7, and that gave us the value of n. If we keep this idea in mind, it'll help us solve some really complicated equations. This is the type of equation that can trip a lot of students up. But let's look at what happened to our variable. If we look at n, we first subtracted 4, and then we divided by 8. So if we do these things and get a value of 10, we can undo these operations and figure out the value of n. So instead of dividing by 8, we'll multiply. Instead of subtracting 4, we will add. First up, multiply both sides by 8. That gives us n minus 4 equals 80. Next up, we'll add 4 to both sides to keep it balanced. And we see that n equals 84. At any point, if you want to check your answer, plug it back in for n and see if this equation stays true. Always a good thing to do on a big test, like an end of course test. All right, if those equations seem simple, let's try this one. Again, if we look at what happened to the variable, we can decide which order we're going to do the operations. So x here, first we added 3. Then, did we multiply or do we do the exponent? Well, order of operations says that the exponent would happen first. So it got squared. And then it got multiplied by a negative 2. And then subtracted 2. All of that gave us a value of negative 100. So if we are to undo all of these things, we need to use inverses and go backwards. Instead of subtracting 2, we'll add. Instead of multiplying by negative 2, we will divide by negative 2. Notice it's just the operation that changes, not the sign of the number. Instead of squaring, we square root. Instead of adding 3, we subtract 3. If we do all these things to negative 100, all right, we'll start at the bottom of our list here and add 2 to both sides. Next up, we'll divide by a negative 2. Negative 98 divided by a negative 2 is positive 49. Then we'll take the square root, a square root is the inverse of squaring. The square root of 49 is 7, but there are two answers here. So there's a positive and a negative 7. Uh, depending on what situation, you may need both of those. Next up, we'll subtract 3 for both sides. So x equals, if we have a positive 7 minus 3, it's 4. If we have a negative 7 minus 3, it's negative 10. Both of these solutions can be plugged in for x, and if you work it out, this equation will be true. Let's look at some special situations that you need to watch out for. A lot of equations will have things that you need to distribute. So you've got a parenthesis and then a number outside that is multiplying. 
So first we want to take care of that by multiplying everything inside. Every term inside gets multiplied by negative 5. Negative 5 times negative 7x is a positive 35x. Negative 5 times positive 1 is negative 5. Bring everything else down. Now here's another special situation. We have like terms here that we need to combine. These are like terms because they have the same variable and the same exponent. In this case, the exponent is just 1. We can combine them, 35x and a positive 4x. Those combine to give us 39x, bring down our minus 5, and bring down the 73. Then we can continue solving this as we've done before, using inverse operations backwards from what they happen to the variable. Now let's look at this situation. If you have a lot of fractions, you can solve it like we have been doing. You can combine like terms and do it like normal, or you can get rid of those fractions by multiplying um, by a multiple of the denominator. In this case, three will work. If we multiply everything by three, we keep it balanced because we do it to both sides, and this will get rid of our fractions. Three times a third is just one, so that's one n. Three times negative two is negative six n. Three times a third is a one. Three times 12 is 36. Now that you've taken care of the fractions, you can just solve this like normal. Let's look at variables on both sides. That just means you've got a variable on both sides of the equal sign. What you're trying to do is get variables moved to one side and numbers or constants moved to the other. In this case, I could move this A by taking it away from both sides. That way we're still keeping it balanced. Subtract an A here so that all I have is a three. Two A minus A is A. And then I can solve this as I would any other equation. Watch out for special cases, especially with variables on both sides. If you see something like this, X plus four equals X plus five. Let's just think about it. Is there any possible way I could have the same number here, adding four to it on this side, adding five to it on this side, and they're gonna be equal? Just thinking about that, there's no way that's possible. We can do a little bit of moving things around, but what you're gonna end up seeing is that this equation just makes no sense. And if you end up with something like that, that's a no solution. All right, what if you have something like this? First, we could distribute by multiplying everything inside the parentheses by that three. And then you might notice both of these are the exact, exact same thing, meaning it doesn't matter what I plug in for X, it's going to be equal no matter what. So because I can plug in any number I want for X, we call that infinitely many solutions. All right, so that's a quick review of all kinds of things with equations.